Welcome to my kitchen. Welcome to my kitchen, where we bring Middle Eastern cooking to America. In today's show, I will be making the famous Middle Eastern dish, dolma, that everyone loves and it's usually served for almost all occasions. I will be making the traditional dolma using eggplants, zucchinis, onion, peppers, tomatoes, and of course, freshly picked from my garden, grape leaves stuffed with meat, rice, tomatoes, and garlic filling. Then cooked in lemon, juice, and tamarind paste sauce. I'm also making vegetarian, freshly picked stuffed grape leaves with rice, tomatoes, garlic, parsley, and onion, cooked in lemon juice and olive oil. For drink, I will be making yogurt mint drink. For the dessert, I will be making delicious homemade pistachio ice cream. I'm here in my backyard. I'll look at these beautiful grape leaves that I have in my backyard. It's really traditional around this time of the year. Um, maybe mid of, mid of June to uh, probably mid of July. That's the season for grape leaves uh, to be picked and reserved for the whole year. And when picking grape leaves, you want to make sure you pick the right size and they have to be all relatively the same size, same color. They need to be tender. You want to make sure they are round and uh, there are no holes or knots and it's not yellow in color. This will be a perfect size for a grape leaf. So you need to cut the stems out. You don't want to break the leaves and you just keep picking the grape leaves. Around this time of the year, you see many Middle Eastern women um, picking grape leaves uh, from uh, parks, from uh, maybe uh, even like uh, trails from uh, backyard of some people's houses that have them. And it's really, uh, so much fun to be outdoor and pick grape leaves. This reminds you of summer and summer is always so short so you want to take advantage of it and be outdoor and uh, pick, have fun with your friends, with your sisters. Make it like an outing and go and tell stories and talk about things and pick grape leaves and have them preserved for the whole year. There are a few more leaves over here that like they are great size of course it depends on how large you want them some people might pick smaller leaves than these some people might pick larger leaves than this it depends on how you like to roll the leaves and how large you want them to be but to me like a medium size will be really a fairly good size for uh, stuffed grape leaves so I guess uh, I have enough for today and I will go to my kitchen and uh, maybe uh, start to reserve some of them and prepare some of them for the stuffed grape leaves that I'll be making. I washed all the grape leaves that I picked from my backyard. Look how beautiful I arranged them. Um, in, like I stack them actually one on top of each other all in the same direction like that and I'll let them drain in a basket like this and now I'm ready to preserve them. Um, grape leaves they are not available all year long. They're only available toward around this time of the year which is uh, mid-June to mid-July. So if you want to have some grape leaves to use for later on in the year you really need to find a way to preserve them so you can have them ready. Of course you can always buy them from a supermarket packed in jars in a liquid made of lemon and citrus acid and salt. But it's nothing like homemade picked and homemade preserved, of course, grape leaves. So there are a few ways uh, we could use to preserve uh, grape leaves. Uh, one of them is 
the old fashioned way, which was drying the grape leaves. My mom always used to do this and she used to hang them. She had a robe across the room and she used to hang them. And then once they are dry, completely dry, bone dry, she will just immerse them in some warm water and they'll be nice and soft and they'll be ready to, to do. So this is what she do, almost make a necklace out of the uh, grape leaves. So I have a sturdy thread here and a large needle. So what I would do is I will take a pack of maybe eight to 10 of them, fold them in half and fold them again. And then just put the needle in there through all of them and then keep adding stacks just like that. Years before, they did not have any refrigerators or didn't have freezers or even a jar. They couldn't find any grape leaves in jars uh, to buy to use uh, uh, stuffed grape leaves. So many, many places, they only have uh, stuffed grape leaves during summertime. Then they found this way. I don't know, my mom said this was the only way they used to preserve the grape leaves uh, when she was young. So they'll have like many necklaces like this hanged and then they'll be just ready to use whenever they need them. And it's so easy, they don't need to be preserved. They just need to be dried and then emerge in water to uh, soften them. And this should be ready. Almost looks like a necklace. See how beautiful they look. And what an easy way to preserve grape leaves. It looks like a necklace made out of grape leaves. So now what I would do is, I will just tie both ends together. And then I have one that's already made. It's drying, you see it's changed, the color has changed and it's, you can see some spots are already dry but they need probably a few more days depending on how hot the weather is and how hot the sun is to dry completely. You make sure they are completely dried so they won't go back. So you just hang them in a place where you think there is a lot of sun or place for them to dry. The other way to preserve grape leaves is, of course, the easiest way is all what you need to do is, of course, after you wash every single one of them from both sides, um, all what you need to do is take a stack. Of course, you need to drain as much water as possible. So these are completely dried. Just take a stack and place them in a Ziploc bag, freezer Ziploc bag, like this. About maybe 30 or 40 of them in each bag, just like that, close it, and this will go in the freezer. It can last for up to two years, and then when you take them out, defrost them, dip them in some hot water, and they'll be just ready to go for stuffing. That's the easiest way to me. But the more popular way that I enjoy doing and I like doing is of course, preserve them in a liquid made of lemon juice and salt water. So this is what I would do. I, you could use any kind of jar. You could use small jars like that for probably just one individual use. So this is what you do. You just take a stack and then like that, and then place it in a jar. Keep adding until probably it's completely full. And then we'll set it on the side for now and then we'll add the solution when we finish packing all of them. Now we'll have our last stack in there. Everything is nicely packed in the jars. Now I will prepare the solution that goes on top for preserving the grape uh, leaves. So I have four cups of freshly squeezed lemon juice to this. I will add two cups of water. 
and about one quarter cup of salt. We need a lot of salt because they need to be preserved for the whole year. So we need to add enough salt in there. It might look like a lot, but actually it's not for this much solution. And now what I would do is I will just add it. I'm gonna make sure everything, all the leaf parts are covered with the lemon solution, completely covered. We'll cover them and they'll go in the fridge for up to one year. Now we will start preparing the stuffed vegetable and grape leaf stuffing. Uh, these are the grape leaves that we picked from my backyard. Look how beautiful they are. I washed every single one of them. I cut the stems out and you see how we, I pile them into uh, piles like that, all in the same direction. I have a pot of boiling water right here that um, I'm gonna let the water boil first and I'm using some onions, medium-sized onions. I'll use maybe four or five of them. Before I do anything, I will make a cut only halfway through the middle of the onion, peel the outer layer out, and then try to simmer it for about three to four minutes in hot water. This will help release all the layers uh, of the onions and it will be easy to come out and um, easy to stop. Of course, if you use larger onions, it might take a little bit longer for um, the onion to layer to separate. So it depends on the size of the onions. So I'm using, this is fairly small onions. So I'll use about maybe five to six of them. Of course, making dolma, it's, it's kind of a long process. Uh, but it is so healthy, it is so delicious, it's so worth the time to spend to prepare it. And you can always prepare it a day before and then cook it the next day and it becomes really handy. And it's nothing better than having all these vegetables in season when they are fresh, grape leaves are fresh. Uh, that's of course the best time to make dolma and everybody loves dolma. The onions are gonna simmer for about maybe three to four minutes, and then all the layers will be separated, and then we'll just remove them and drain the water. So while we are waiting for the onions uh, to simmer, I will start getting the other vegetables ready. I'm using about three eggplants. So what we need to do first is we will cut the stem out. Of course, these are already washed and dried. And then cut each one of them in half. Beautiful looking eggplants. Just like that. And now what I would do is I will scoop all the flush out using this amazing device, of course. Use as much as possible to scoop all the flush out, leaving only thin walls around the skin of the eggplant. Want to make sure we'll have enough filling and enough stuffing for the eggplants. So this will be perfect. And we'll keep scooping all the flush out. We will scoop the last piece of eggplant, the flush from the last piece. It's all done. Now I will sprinkle the inside of each piece with some salt, just like that. This will make the eggplant a little bit softer when cooking in the pot. And I also have 
about two tablespoons of vegetable oil in a skillet like this. What I would do is I will just saute the eggplant from all the sides just until soft. Sometimes if you don't do this step, eggplants tend to uh, be more rubbery when cooked in lemon sauce. But when you saute them like this, you can also put them in the oven, just brush them with some oil, put them in a tray and they go in the oven just until soft. We don't want to deep fry them. We just want to saute them so it will become beautiful, sweet and soft. So we just want to turn, make sure all the sides are soft for about two to three minutes. I believe the onions are all ready. Look how nicely they separated from each other, the layers. And now they'll be easy to separate apart. I will remove them with a slotted spoon and let them sit in a dish like this to drain all the water and to cool off before separating the layers. It's perfect. I turned the heat off. The water is hot. Actually, it's been simmering for a long time. So now I will take advantage of this hot water that I have and I will dip the grape leaves that we already picked in water. This will make them more soft and more pliable. So it will be easy for us to fill them and roll them just for a few minutes, actually two to three minutes. You just want to simmer them. And you will see immediately they'll be changing color. They'll turn yellow. Perfect. We will remove the ones that already soft. Try to drain them. And they'll go back in the basket. You see how they change color? They become more yellow. Of course, more soft. It only took about not even a minute. And that's about it. These are ready. We'll let them sit and drain. Perfect. And now, we will check on the eggplants. Just want to turn them to make sure to set the all sides. Just for a minute or so. Look how beautiful and soft they are becoming already. This will give them that amazing sweetness to them and amazing flavor too. So this will be perfect. I will remove them and set them on the sides until we are ready to stop them. While we are waiting for the onions to cool off a little bit, I will prepare the zucchinis. I'm using four zucchinis. Look how beautiful um, green color these zucchinis are. They are so fresh. What I would do is cut the stem off, of course, after washing them and drying them, and cut it in half, just like that. And we will do the same thing for all four of them. Uh, when using larger zucchinis or squash, you can even cut them in three pieces if you want. And sometimes they come in much, much smaller size than that. You don't even have to cut them. You just cut the stem and scoop the flush out. And of course, we will do the same thing. We will scoop all the inside of the zucchini all the way in. Make sure we leave thin walls uh, around the skin. And we'll just do that. We don't need to do anything for this. These are ready to go for stuffing. Real beautiful and tender. 
nothing like fresh vegetables when they are in season, they are the best. Years before, dolma was made only for special occasions. Um, now, of course, everything is available. Vegetables are available all year long. Uh, grape leaves, you can find them preserved or you can preserve them yourself. So you can make it any time of the year. It does not have to be a special occasion to make dolma. Now we will work on the last piece of the zucchini. Now the eggplants are ready, the zucchinis are ready to go. I will get the peppers ready. I'm using these small peppers, I'm using colored peppers. Really beautiful, you could use just regular uh, size of peppers. You could use green pepper, you could use Hungarian peppers, whatever you prefer. I like using these small ones. They are really sweet and they are individual size. So all what you do is you need to make a cut, not all the way through. You don't want to have this out, the cover out, and then scoop all the seeds and the flush from the inside. So this one is still attached, just like that. We'll have them ready for stuffing. I'm using some red, some uh, orange and yellow, just like that. If you don't want to use any peppers, that's fine. If you like to use more onions, more eggplants, more zucchinis, really there are no rules. Whatever your family prefer, whatever you like to use. My kids love the grape leaves on onions and the dolma. Sometimes I just make that. I don't use anything else. So it all depends on what your family likes and what you like to use, what you have available at the house too. One more thing is I always, always like to use stuffed tomatoes for stuffing. So I'm using this um, uh, beef steak tomato, which is excellent for stuffing and it's really sweet and it's beautiful. So we will do exactly the same thing. We will just cut through the top, not all the way through. We still wanna keep it intact. And what I would do is I will just scoop the inside, just like that. I might have to use a knife. It's fairly large tomato to release the flush on the inside makes it a little bit easier. Just like that. Sure, everything needs to come out. All the seeds and the juice from the tomato. And it's perfect. And I will use this when I'm ready to stuff them. Now, I believe the onions should be cool enough for me to handle, to separate the layers. So all what you do is just gently remove all the layers one by one. You don't want to break them, just like that. Much, much easier when it's cooled off. Perfect. And I will never throw these away. I'll just throw them in the pot. This will give you that amazing flavor. So we'll just separate all the onion pieces. Layers, actually. Much, much easier once you simmer them in water. Nothing break. It comes all in one piece. It's much harder when you don't simmer them in water to separate all these layers. Perfect. From five to six onions, you get a lot of layers. Of course, it depends on what size onions you are using. Perfect. So all the vegetables that I need to use for stuffing is ready now. Eggplants are ready. The zucchinis are all scooped out. The tomato is all ready. And the peppers are ready. My onion layers are ready. And the um, grape leaves are all nice and soft and they are ready to go. Now it's time for us to prepare the stuffing for the dolma. I have washed and drained three cups of long grain rice. And to this, I will add two pounds 
of minced beef, then two to three large tomatoes, goes in there, one cup of tomato paste, goes in there, real easy filling to make but very, very flavorful. Three to four cloves of garlic that I minced real finely. One quarter cup of freshly squeezed lemon juice goes in there. And then, of course, the seasoning. I will use two to three teaspoons of salt. Should be good and then two to three teaspoons of mixed spices. Baharat, it's a blend of many spices together. That's gonna give it this amazing, unique flavor. Of course, now all the filling items are there. All what I have to do is use my hands, the best tools, of course, and mix everything gently. We don't wanna break the rice grains. Of course, you could use more rice, less meat, or the opposite. Uh, it's really optional how much meat you want to use versus how much rice. I like the dolma to have a lot of meat. It will have more flavor. Of course, more garlic. You know, many people try to stay away from garlic, so they eliminate using the garlic in the filling, and that's fine, whatever you like. Uh, some people might add um, some chopped onion or sauteed onion. I heard some people might like to add. Again, it's optional. You can do whatever you want. I have a large pot right here to this. I will add some vegetable oil, about a quarter of a cup in the bottom. And then what I would do is I will line the whole bottom with some grape leaves. This will eliminate any vegetables from burning. And uh, when you flip it, you'll have these leaves on top. It's kind of work like a cover. Of course, it's optional to do this step. You don't have to. I always like to do it. It's just like a habit. So this is perfect. And now I will start stuffing the vegetables. I will start off by stuffing the tomato. Tomato is the largest piece of my vegetables, so I would like to leave that in the center. When using the filling, you wanna make sure you only use about two thirds full. You don't wanna fill it all the way to the top. So I will center my tomatoes in there. And then I will start with the zucchinis. I take two pieces at a time and take some stuffing. We don't want to pack them and fold them loosely. We want to stuff them, put them just like that next to each other and line them on the outer line of the pot, just like that. And we will continue with the zucchinis. Most of the time when people are making dolma, it's always uh, fun to have two uh, maybe friends, two sisters, two relatives, mom and daughter, to work together. It takes a long time and it will be nice to tell stories, to talk about um, some stuff. So it's, you know, most of the time a lot of people might do that. Perfect. And if you are making a very large pot, if you have a special occasion, you might need more than two people to help rolling and stuffing. Eggplants are beautiful, so soft. It doesn't matter where you line certain vegetables um, next to, you can just place them anywhere you want. And now we will start with the peppers, just like that. 
I'm going to try to get rid of all the rice grain that stays on, on the outer part of the vegetables. So you can have much nicely looking dolma. We are placing our last pepper in there. And now it's time for us to stuff the onions. Open it. And again, you don't want to fill them all the way to the top. And just place them like that. One next to each other. Look at these beautiful vegetables. How healthy is that is and how delicious it's going to be too. I can't think of anyone that doesn't like dolma. Everyone loves dolma. The last pieces, last layers of onion. Like I said, I like to arrange all these pieces that we couldn't separate. They'll give you so much flavor. They are my favorite pieces, actually. And now, lastly, but not least, we need to work on stuffing the grape leaves. So what I would do is, I will take about maybe six leaves, shiny side down, vein side up, Relatively all the same size. That's what I try to do when I pick grape leaves. I like to pick them when they are relatively all the same size. So when you roll them, they will all have that uh, beautiful shape to them, easier to roll, and they will all look the same. It's kind of neat when you have them all the same size in the pot. So what I would do is I will place about maybe one tablespoon of filling in the center towards the stem, closer to the stem. Much, much easier to arrange six of them like that on a cutting board or any work surface. And then what I would do is I will bring both sides towards the center, roll the top end all the way tightly, all the way to the pointed end and you have beautiful stuff great place. If you've never done this before, this is how it should look like. And we will continue rolling the remaining grape leaves by rolling them tightly just like a cigar and arrange them one next to each other. Bring both sides to the center and then start from the top towards the bottom to the pointed end roll tightly like a cigar just like that and arrange them next to each other snuggly next to each other so they will not move or open during cooking time just like that perfect so much fun i really enjoy making dolma especially the grape leaves i'm using one layer of grape leaves in my pot, but uh, many people like a lot of grape leaves. So you could use two layers or three layers. You could use less vegetables if you want, or a bigger pot if you want. Make sure they are fitted nicely and snugly like that. Press through, make sure nothing is gonna move like that. And the dolma. Everything is nicely stuffed and it's done. Now it's ready to be cooked. Uh, sometimes at this point you might take this, cover it and put it in the fridge and cook it the next day. But today we are ready to cook it right now. So what I would do is, this is a really heavy plate. The heavier the better that you can insert on top. This will keep um, the vegetables and the leaves uh, to stay in there and uh, not to open or move during cooking time. So will be ready we will turn the heat on we'll let the bottom layer just set a little bit in the oil and um, i will get ready to prepare the sauce to cook the dolma with now we are gonna get ready to get the um, liquid ready for uh, cooking the dolma with or actually the sauce 
Uh, so I have one and a half cups of freshly squeezed lemon juice that will go on top. And then I have one and a half cups of water. To this, I will add one tablespoon of tamarind paste. Of course, it's optional. If you don't like tamarind, you can just use water and you can use lemon. Um, you really don't have to do that, but this will give it that sweetness and sourness flavor. And it's going to be amazing. It's my favorite um, thing to cook the dolma with. So this will go on top. So this whole pot needs only about three cups of liquid to cook with. The vegetables will release a lot of liquid. So that's why you don't really need to emerge the whole uh, dolma with liquid. Uh, so this will be good in the stuffing in the, do in the dolma. It's going to release some liquid. So this will be just perfect. I will wait until everything comes to a boil. The liquid is coming to a boil. Now I will turn the heat down to medium and then put the lid back on and then let it cook over low heat for about 45 to one hour, 45 minutes to one hour until nice and tender. Look how beautiful the dolma is. It's beautiful, nothing moved. Everything is still in place. That's uh, what happens when you add that heavy uh, plate on it and when you cook it on low and looks beautiful. We need to let it sit for about half an hour to cool off before serving it. Now it's time for us to prepare the filling for the vegetarian stuffed grape leaves. Um, for this, I have two cups of washed and drained long grain rice. To this, I will add two large tomatoes chopped, six to eight green onions. You could use regular uh, white onion, one largely, one large chopped onion, and then two cups chopped parsley. To this, I will add half cup of olive oil. This will make it beautifully moist and flavorful. Just because we are not using any meat, the olive oil will take care of that part. And then three to four garlic cloves minced goes in there. One teaspoon of red pepper. You could use more or less, depending on how spicy you want it. Two teaspoons of salt. Again, you can control the salt also by using more or less. And then two tablespoons of pomegranate syrup. I'm just gonna eyeball that. It should be perfect. Now we will gently Mix all these ingredients together. This combination is amazing. It gives you so much flavor. It's so healthy for you, and it's great for summertime. And this dish, it's good as a meal, as an appetizer. You can eat it cold or warm or just hot also. It's so delicious. It's great for people who are vegetarians or vegan. We're not using any animal product in this mixture. And now I have all the ingredients nicely mixed. Now before I start anything, I will line some grape leaves on the bottom of the pot. This will prevent it from burning or sticking to the pot. Just the whole surface. I like to use uh, the ripped ones, the extra large ones to use in the bottom. And then to this, I will just add some olive oil. Perfect. And I will start laying some grape leaves. And I 
will have about maybe table, one tablespoon of filling in the center towards the stem. What a great colors for this filling. It's packed of new nutrients and it's so healthy for you and it's so, so delicious. And just bring the sides to the center and start rolling from top all the way to the bottom tightly like a cigar and place it in a pot. Keep rolling. Tightly all the way to the pointed end. Finishing. I believe there is room for one more. And I have three rows of Great leaves in the pot, snugly fitted next to each other. Looks beautiful. It's going to be delicious. Now we will start cooking the vegetarian stuffed grape leaves. I will turn the heat to high first. I will apply a heavy plate on top. This will help the leaves to move or to break or, um, during uh, cooking time. Uh, for the cooking liquid, I need one and a half cups of water, half cup of freshly squeezed lemon juice. It goes in the top. And then one quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil. This will give it a lot of flavor since there is no meat in the filling. We'll let it come to a boil for a minute or so. The mixture is coming to a boil. We will turn the heat to medium to low. We'll put the cover on and we'll cook it for about 45 minutes to one hour until nice and tender. Now it's time for us to prepare the ice cream. We're making pistachio ice cream. It's the most beautiful, amazing, delicious ice cream, homemade ice cream. So this recipe, I need two cups of milk, just regular milk. Goes in a small saucepan, just like that. One cup of sugar. You want your ice cream to be a little bit more sweeter, you can add a little bit more sugar. I like it to be just perfect. And then to this, I will add two tablespoons of cornstarch. This will work as thickener for the custard. So we're making custard. We will place it over the heat, whisking constantly until it's beautiful and thick. It will take about three to four minutes. First of all, we'll just whisk. We want to make sure the sugar and the cornstarch are nicely dissolved in the milk. Look how beautiful and thick the mixture is. We want to remove it from the heat as soon as possible. And now to this, I will add one tablespoon of vanilla extract. And then, of course, we are making pistachio ice cream, so we need to use some green food coloring of course you can control how dark and light you want it by how much you want to add to it I think this should be good we'll mix it make sure everything is nicely blended and now we will transfer it to a glass bowl piece of plastic on top well it's still hot this will prevent it from forming a crust on top and we'll let it sit 
for about one hour to cool off and then we'll go in the fridge for six to eight hours for everything to marinate and to give you that amazing flavor. To finish making the ice cream, I have one and a half cups of heavy whipping cream here that I will whip until stiff peaks form. We'll take about three to four minutes. Look how beautiful and thick the whipped cream is. See, when it doesn't fall, there's it holds on the mixture. That means it's ready. Now, I will remove the plastic wrap and gently we will fold the whipped cream into the custard that we made. How beautiful and thick was sitting in the fridge overnight and we'll keep adding until nicely blended. Now we will add everything. So beautiful and so velvety and smooth. This is the ice cream maker bowl. This has to go in the freezer for at least 10 hours. There is water or liquid in between two walls that need to be frozen and when you shake it if you don't hear anything moving that means it's solid frozen and this is exactly how we want it it's very important this will help the ice cream to freeze in the ice cream maker so now what i would do is i will transfer the mixture into the ice cream maker bowl and we will add the attachment to it then the cover and then we will turn it on and we'll let it do its job for 30 to 40 minutes until solid ice cream it's almost done it's nice and thick last five minutes i will add one and a half cups of ground pistachios perfect we'll just let it mix for a minute or so should be good everything is nicely blended and now perfect. transfer this whole mixture into the container and then this will go in the freezer for six to eight hours to freeze completely it smells so great and it tastes so good great way to make ice cream this is Buying this machine, it's really a good investment. You can make homemade ice cream, so many kinds of homemade ice cream. And we'll just put this more pistachios on top. Put the lid back on, and this will go in the freezer for eight to 10 hours to completely freeze. Of course, you can't have uh, dolma or grape leaves without having some yogurt with it. So I'm making a yogurt drink, mint yogurt drink. I have two cups of plain, homemade plain yogurt here, and about maybe one cup of ice cube. To this, I will add about one teaspoon of salt, just to flavor it. And then some fresh mint. Of course, it's optional. If you don't like to, to add mint, you don't have to. But of course, this will flavor the yogurt and it's gonna make it so delicious. And all what we need to do is just I think that's good. And then have these beautiful decorative cups that I have from back home. It says Ahlan wa Sahlan on it. That means welcome. And I will pour the yogurt drink in these beautiful cups like that. It smells so good. Yogurt drink is so refreshing with dolma with many meals actually especially summertime. And now what we need to do is just like add some more mint to 
decorated with and just even add more flavors. Now I have everything on my table. We have our preserved grape leaves in here in jars. We have our sun-dried uh, grape leaves uh, like necklaces in here. And then we have our dolma mixed vegetable with uh, grape leaves uh, beautifully in here. The vegetarian one, the yogurt drink. And now it's time for us to serve our dessert which is the pistachio ice cream that we made. It's been sitting in the freezer for overnight, for about 10 hours actually. So we'll just scoop and add in this beautiful decorative ice cream dishes. Look at this beautiful color. It's delicious and it looks so good easy way to make a great dessert with children or um, if you are having a get together or a party it's nothing like homemade ice cream that's how much time we have for today in today's show we made this amazing dish it's called dolma very very famous middle eastern dish it's uh, mixed vegetables and stuffed grape leaves. And we made vegetarian stuffed grape leaves. We made yogurt to drink with mint for, uh, to go with the dish. And then for dessert, we made this amazing pistachio ice cream. Thank you so much for coming to my kitchen and enjoy Middle Eastern cooking. We hope to see you next time with more exotic dishes from the Middle East.